Hello, this is Mr. Gilmore with the 4.3 Part 1, the Playfair Postulate and its Consequences. Or, we're really going to see how to make Euclidean ge or geometry Euclidean today. As it turns out, that Euclidean is not the only type of geometry, but with the introduction of our Playfair Postulate today, we will then solidify the result of making this class officially Euclidean. Let's review the corresponding angles postulate real quick because what we're going to take a look at here in a moment is the converse of the corresponding angles postulate, which is if a line does cut through a pair of parallels, does it result in equal corresponding angles? So again, with corresponding angles postulate, it says that if we have a line that passes through lines M and N, and it, it cuts such that the measures of angle 1 and angle 2, which are corresponding angles, to be equal, then the lines are parallel. Now, I've got a question to ask you about this. Could we have drawn another line through point P, let's say line Z, for example, that is also parallel to line M? So in the, plat in the pa last diagram, we saw a line cutting through lines M and M, and one of the lines was passing through point P. The question is, can I draw a second line through point P that is also parallel to line M? In other words, let's take a look at this diagram. So I have a line cutting through line M and N, and N is passing through point P. Again, the question is, can I have drawn this second line Z such that it is also parallel to line M? Well, it's obvious. The answer is no. You cannot draw a second line. But how do we reason that? Right? Is it by definition? Is it by postulate? Or is it by theorem? Right? Which one would it fall into? Those are the three reasons that we use. Well, it's not by definition. Okay? It can't be. Right? Uh, it's, the definition is not powerful. We can't just say by definition that there can't be more than one line. We can't do that. So then it was thought to believe that it must have been a theorem, right? It must be, let's prove that there cannot be a second line that passes through it. And it uh, took all the way up until the 19th century to finally arrive to a conclusion that, here's the, here's the funny part, that it can't be proven. It turns out in the 19th century that there was a proof that shows that it can't be proven due to the fact that we discovered other types of geometries outside of Euclidean. So, it's not a definition that's not simply not powerful enough. It was proven that it can't be proven, which means it's not a theorem, which means it leaves us with just one option. It must be a postulate. Thus, let me introduce you to the Playfair postulate, named after the Scottish mathematician John Playfair. In one of his writings, there were actually many sorts of ways to try to write out this this. Uh, this postulate of showing that there's precisely one line that passes through that point. Well, his writing actually leaves some flexibility within the postulate. Let's read what he wrote. He wrote, through a point not on a given line, there's at most one line parallel to the given line. That's how powerful his, his postulate was. He uses this phrase, at most one. So what that means is we can have zero parallel lines through any given point, not on a line, and we're allowed at least, or at most, one point, or one line through that point, not on a given line. So if we take a look at a diagram of how the Playfair postulate unfolds, we can see if we're given a point P not on line M, we're allowed at most one line th through point P that's parallel to line M. Well, in this case, we're allowed at most one, which means, hey, the given diagram is satisfied. We can have zero parallel lines that pass through point P parallel to line M, but we are allowed at most one, which means I can then choose to create a line, we'll call that line N, that does indeed pass through point P and is in fact parallel to line M. That's how powerful Playfair wrote it, which is why we give him credit to this postulate. Now, let me introduce then the corresponding angle's consequence. This is the converse of the corresponding angle's postulate. So we have CAP, which is our introduce, or first uh, conditional, which is going to lead us then into the converse of itself, which is now CAC, the corresponding angle's consequence. So we exchange our given and conclusion. So here's what this one states. If a pair of parallel lines, so note that we're already given parallel lines, 
If a pair of parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then angles which correspond are equal. So if we cut through a pair of parallel lines, we're going to find that the corresponding angles that are formed must be equal. But like any good conditional, we must prove this. So let's go ahead and set up the proof. We're given line N and line M such that they are already parallel. And we, are, we already have formed angle 1 and angle 2. We're going to prove that those two uh, corresponding angles there are in fact equal to each other. Now here's the kicker. Notice that I still have point P labeled. We're going to use point P in our proof of the corresponding angles consequence because the proof of this is not direct. We're actually going to prove this indirect which means if we want to prove angle 1 and angle 2 are equal, let's assume that they're not. We're going to arrive to a contradiction with this using the Playfair postulate. Let's see how this unfolds. So let's assume that angle 1 and angle 2 are not equal to each other. What that means is if angle 1 and angle 2 are not equal, that means there must be an angle out there that is equal to angle 1. So here's how we can find that equal angle. Let's then say we may construct a line Z such that it passes through that point P, such that angles, the angle, corresponding angles that are formed are equal. In other words, there is a line Z that passes through point P that forms our angle 3. So notice in our diagram, we have this angle 3, which is formed between our transversal and line Z. Well, since angle 1 and angle 2 are not equal, this angle that we've constructed angle 3 must be equal to angle 1. We've constructed it such that those corresponding angles are equal. Well, let's see how then our, our uh, reduction unfolds, right? So we've, we've assumed angle 1 is not equal to angle 2, which means there is an angle 3 that's out there that does equal angle 1, and it's formed by this, this line Z that also passes through point P. Now let's take a look at what happens. So in our reduction, since line Z forms angle 3 that is equal to angle 1, that means we have a pair of equal corresponding angles. What does that say then by the corresponding angles postulate? That means line Z, which is distinct from line A, is also parallel to line M. What that means to us, since we were given line N is already parallel to line M, that's two lines through the same point. Notice that, two lines through the same point P, such that they are both parallel to line M. That is a contradiction, because by the Playfair postulate, we're allowed at most one line through any given point, not a line parallel to that given line. So that means line Z cannot exist. Line N is the only line that was given parallel to line M through point P, so line Z can't happen. Well, that means we have a contradiction. That the measure angle 1 not equal to measure 2, that's false. We should toss that out. So since that is one of the possibilities, they're either not equal, we toss that out, that leaves us with only one possibility left, and that is that they are equal. So that is our conclusion to the proof of the corresponding angles consequence. It's actually proven indirectly. So be sure to take a look at this worksheet. Be working through this worksheet, 4.3 Part 1. If you do have any questions, please be sure to email me. We're going to finish up the 4.3 Part 2 in the next lesson. We're going to look at, well, what then follows from the corresponding angles consequence, or the CAC, because there are other ways to determine what the angle relationships are if we cut lines that are already given to us as parallel. Be sure to email me if you do have any questions on that worksheet. With that, be good and do good.